Well, I am very, very excited. And, and I've been trying to have you on for three weeks now. And you're such a busy dude that I was like, and Drake, this is why I love you so much. Cause I normally would not ask somebody three times. I'm like, Drake, you got to get on my call, dude. I have to have you. Um, so you're an animal. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in one second, but just so you guys, just so you guys know, um, Drake is somebody who came in like in June or July and wrote a hundred thousand dollars in his first three months. So I think that this is going to be, if we've had any call this year, this is the one that you guys are going to want to be dialed into. So Drake, I'm excited. Um, I would love for anybody who doesn't know you, because you still are new to the business, which is crazy to think about, um, to, to kind of tell us your story, your background, how long you've been here, what, what's the scoop? Well, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, you know, I'm blessed to be here. Thanks to, you know, Grady's Drip campaign and all the videos I watched. Uh, you know, I really started digging into your videos, Grady's, Nina's, uh, everybody you mentioned in March and got licensed in June and had to transition from that company. So uh, I came July 7th. I've got 22 years of being in Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, and J.P. Morgan as a senior manager and a VP business relationship manager. So all customer service, the phone number that I put in the group there for you all, uh, I did it with Brendan Kitchen's team uh, a week ago. If you're not in my phone book, it goes to voicemail. So if it's important, leave a voicemail because I won't answer um, if you find anything valuable or want to reach out to me as a resource, just text me. Uh, a few people already have. So thank you to those that did. Now I got you saved. Um, well, really, honestly, being part of the corporate world my whole life and watching what Grady did, being so close to him, uh, it kind of had like a life event emergency and got hurt in a car accident that made me stop the hamster wheel and jump out and say, OK, I want to work for myself. I can do this as well as anyone else. Um, now, with that said, you know, July 7th, I come guns a blazing. I'm all ready to go. And I'm like, OK, I'm on phone burner. I'm triple dialing. I'm power dialing. I've got thousands of leads. That's how I learned. Six hours, take a break. Six more hours, people hanging up, yelling at me. doesn't matter. It just kind of gave me energy to get one that was happy or one that I could help. Um, I did that for like maybe three days in a row. And I'm like, okay, this is the same as business banking and calling people in Salesforce. I get it. Um, I was fortunate enough at the time to be introduced to, you know, clever closers, which are high intent uh, leads that at the time were only 20 bucks because I was part of the beta program. And then, you know, they went up to 35 and they launched it to everyone. That's all I've run. So just really quickly in a nutshell, and then I'll just kind of tell you the process. You know, July 7th, I went live, didn't sell anything. Three days later, sold my first policy, got addicted, was like, oh my God, adrenaline. It hit my account in two days. I'm like, oh, more adrenaline. Um, I never went back. I found a good vendor. I found high intent quality leads that people answer. Uh, typically 10% of the batch you get is pretty much decided. So speed to the leads, really important. Um, but just to give you an idea, in that less than a month in July, I did 27,000, August 24, September 59, October 34. Right now I'm at 22 with 10 pending and I took two weeks off. Um, so about 166,903 in those four and a half months. Um, the, the reason it was possible is because I log in to Living Hope Live Dial. So similar to Marissa's thing, I notice everybody advertises, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I noticed Josh Lockhart, Sean Simpson, and Jamie were dialing 10, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Their room was live every day. And I'm like, this is the accountability I need. So I just didn't reinvent the wheel, but I did memorize everybody's scripts, figure out what would work. I take away distraction. So my wife thinks I'm crazy because I don't look at Instagram. I don't look at LinkedIn, my Facebook. My phone number has been the same 25 years. I've got 39,800 people in there from business banking. I'll never change it. I call everybody from my phone number. Um, however, if it's not about you know the 100 warm people I'm calling today, then it's probably not that important. And I can get to it between 9 and 9.30 before I pass out. Um, I get up at 3.30 in the morning. I run on my commercial treadmill right behind me in my gym. You can't see. Uh, five o'clock in the morning, I'm on and with those guys that are already in Georgia at eight o'clock their time in South Carolina, and I'm dialing. 
ultimately I block out all distractions. So I have a window open with my Google sheet and I have a separate Chrome window open for my quote tool, which I don't give quotes very rarely. And then I have another Chrome window open that has, you know, Americo, Moo, NLG, Aetna, all up, ready to go because it's just submission. So my my thought process was, wow, these guys are amazing. God, these appointments take like an hour, but they're killing it. Mine was a little different. When I saw Brandon Kitchens do one call close, I'm like, that's who I am. So I have v, uh, Zippo with Verified Producer. I don't really use Zippo for anything but Verified Producer and now Drip Campaign because I have 800 plus warm leads that I threw in there. But ultimately, my process was really, really simple. The leads come in. I'm going to call them in the morning. I'm going to put a tick that it's a.m. I'm going to call them at lunchtime. I'm going to call them at p.m. I'm going to text them a, you know, their info card. And then I'm going to send them an intro text that gives them two slots of availability and why I'm trying to get back to them. And it's important. That's it. And then repeat. So literally, when I get someone on the phone, it's like, Marissa, it's Drake. I'm not a telemarketer. Don't hang up. They're like, what? Huh? That throws them off guard every time. What are you? I'm just calling about this 220,000 that I see that you're trying to protect your home. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Did you watch a Facebook video for three minutes and then go to a separate website and get text verified? I see your emails here have been verified. Is this the correct email? Yeah. Great. So I'm going to send you something really quick, but I need you to grab a pen and piece of paper. Can you do that right now? Yeah. Great. When they grab a pen and piece of paper, real simple. I'm already texting them my verified producer page. So by the time you know they blink and they say, oh, I have it. I'm like, oh, you know what? The state requires me to send you my licenses. I actually just sent you a digital copy, assuming you're on a smartphone, are you? And they say, yeah. And I go, great. So if you just want to click on that, the state requires me to let you uh, make sure you lay eyes on it. We don't have to go through it all in detail, but just so you can see the funny picture of me and I can kind of explain to you what I do. They open it really quick before I go into any type of detail or anything whatsoever. I just say, we have you covered and I can see that your home's important to you. There's three things I'm going to need from you today in order for me to submit a prescription check. That's going to be your social security number, an account number that's linked to you, and your driver's license. Is that going to be a problem? No. Great. Then we move forward. Yeah. No, I had fraud. Can't give you my account number. Okay. So here, scroll down to the verified producer and just go down a little further to the state you're in. It's Texas, right? Yeah. Click on there. That's my social security number for being a licensed agent. Just want you to take note of that. Then I want you to click out of there and look at how many states you see. What is there, 18? Yes. Okay. And then scroll to the bottom and you're going to see those A-rated 100-year-old billion-dollar insurance carriers that I'm contracted with. How many do you see there? Oh, 17. Okay. So just in a nutshell, to let you know, I had my fingerprints done, my background check done, my credit check done, and a live scan done independently for each one of those carriers to have the honor of serving you today. So if you don't trust me with your account number because of fraud, I understand but I can't help you. Does that you make sense? Straight up. Straight up. That's the first, two, this is me naturally. I just I just booked four appointments that are after this call from a batch of 50 brand new clever closers. Yes, that's exactly what I say. Nothing sugarcoated. Love that. Okay, so Drake, real quick, let's back up because this is all fantastic. A lot of times people who are in your situation, they've been at, at, at a place where they're very experienced for 22 years see an opportunity like this and they think this is like bogus. Did you have any reservation or did you know that like if Grady had been doing it, it's got to be legit? Like, did you, well, you're not, were you not freaked out to leave your experience of 22 years and just get your insurance license? Yes, I was freaked out, but I was injured and on leave for three months. And for me with, you know, ADD and always a lot of energy and the gift of gab, I couldn't sit still. So I got licensed and I just memorized everything I saw every person he ever interviewed and just kind of absorbed everything I could. Um, and just, it took me out of my comfort zone and I felt free, honestly, for the first time in 25 years of being married and being in this house. It's the first time the last four months that I felt like I'm doing something where I'm actually being valued, providing better services and free. Grady, yeah. you know, call me every day, whoop me in the butt, do this, do that. You know, you're being sold on them not doing it. And I'm like, okay. All right. All right. Just keep yeah. calling me, keep breaking me in. And, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, I said this at the last convention um, and I said it in the first interview with Grady, but until one Sunday, I had done actually 
seven days a week and only took off one Sunday because of my teenage daughter who's 17. So no matter where you're at in your career, I have a lot of folks that call me for role playing and coaching that have been here two years that are averaging, you know, 10 to maybe 20 on their best month. And they've been here two years doing part-time, doing full-time, doing second jobs, doing this part-time. You know, they can't decide what they're doing full-time or part-time because they haven't actually given enough of themselves to be confident after 90 days. Look at yourself and be like, wow, okay, I can do this. Plus, I've heard every rebuttal in the sun. And if it's going to waste my time, I'll just move to the next one. If it's something I can add value and be like, your rebuttal doesn't make sense and this is why you know, then I'll try to win over the sale and, and do it right then. Yeah. So Drake, a lot of times too, because you came in like not licensed and then 30K, like it was like not licensed a month ago and then 30K the next month. A lot of times people are like, well, I don't know the products. I didn't know what do I, what do I say? <laughs> like, so what were the things that you plugged into? Like, did you not worry about knowing the products? I never no. worried about knowing the products. No, I no. I, so luck, what was luckily, that process? Like your first week in the field, what was that? Luckily, I have you. I have Grady, right? I mean, I've got these superstars around me. No, a lot of people get overwhelmed and they have to learn, you know, the knockout grids and the medications and stuff. And I'm like, I just got to get them on the phone. There's a trick to that, though. So we all know we lead with America, right? So because we just do because it's a great platform. When you put in... Well, you know, when I say these are the three things I need right now and they go, okay, and I have Google up in a separate window and I'm like, so PNC Bank in Florida, is this the routing number? And they go, yeah. And I go, okay, what's the account number to match it, to validate who you are? They give it to me. Keep in mind, you don't even need that account number until you're in the second phase, but I get all three things up front so that I don't have rebuttals later because with their, my dog's calling at the door, sorry. Uh, when you put in their name, their birthday, their social, it doesn't matter if you select whole life or term life, whatever product, because you can change it later. And then you send them the HIPAA form and you get back that text authorization. In banking, we would call that pre-flighting a deal. And that's what I'm calling it here. And people are like, whoa, you like screen them before you recommend? I'm like, well, well yeah. Well, why do we have this tool? So within three minutes, because I already know their name, I've already got their email, I already have their phone number. I just need their actual birthday because I only know their age, their actual social security number, and their actual physical address. Just with that data, you can send the HIPAA form. And if they're on MIB with cancer or dialysis or something gnarly, it's going to flag in yellow before you even send the HIPAA. If they make it past that, which 99% of mine do, as soon as you go into the medical questions, which we all know and ask, um, it's going to go through like three of them and then red flag again to MIB, uh, or it's going to continue to the end and flag to MIB. Real good rule of thumb is pre-flight your deals, but get the information up front so that you can pre-flight it. When, when they would get declined with America and they wanted whole life, I would immediately jump to Aetna because I've gotten a ton of people on cocktails and medications you would not believe approved with Aetna. No problems. 50K, 250 bucks. They're happy as clams. They don't know that I'm switching carriers. I just say, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm researching for you. I work for you. I'm not a captive agent. Doesn't make any sense for me if you don't stay a client for at least 12 months. It actually works against me. So I'm switching to a sister carrier real quick. You just got another email. I need to also do HIPAA for that one because we want to make sure we're getting you in the best product possible for you and your family within your budget. So if they get declined with Americo for whole life, it's Aetna. If they get declined for a term policy with Americo, bam, I go to NLG or American Amicable if you don't have NLG. Immediately, I realized that I could pre-flight my clients and then put them right where they need to go and get more approvals. I did $214,000 in submissions for Americo and got 94000 issue paid. So you'd be really surprised the stuff that Eagle Premier will approve, but it pre-flights for you. And then keep in mind, every time you get someone that's under 70, that maybe is going to have to go to Aetna, maybe not going to get as much as they want. I always say, you know, I'm sending this over to, you know, Mutual of Omaha as well, 
please sign that form and get it right back to me. And then I lead with congratulations, you're approved for a half a million dollars of accidental. Now this isn't, oh, but I have that with my company. Okay, great. But if you go find a better company to work for, you lose it. Or if you, God forbid, get fired or you retire, you can't keep it. This is guaranteed advantage. So there's no waiting term. There's no fine print, et cetera. I lead with the guess what you're approved for, because we all know everybody that's under 70 is approved for accidental, right? So they're now kind of, you're kind of selling to their greed of a half a million dollars of accidental. And then I go say, hey, but I got you Aetna up to 25,000 to cover that first year of mortgage protection, cover that final expense, whatever their need was. That's so you're be about accidental on pretty much everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, I mean, it's an extra 10 bucks or whatever it is, right? Well, yeah. I mean, a half a million on a woman uh, under 60 is about between 43 and 67 bucks on a male. It's like 60 bucks to 97. So it's a good premium for us. It's a sticky product and it's a peace of mind. I include it. Even if there's accidental in the AmeriCo policy, that one has fine print that the guaranteed advantage does not. And it's such a large amount. Yeah. So you're getting on and everything. Okay. Now, so I love what you said there, guys. And if you're taking notes, the thing is the best experience is for you to just do it, right? And that's why I asked Drake that question because I'll have people that message me and they're like, hey, I'd really like to look at the underwriting guidelines or I'd really like to find this resource. And I'm like, for what, right? Like you don't have anything to underwrite, my dude. You don't need to be doing any underwriting unless you get clients on the phone and then you can worry about underwriting, right? Like you don't need to worry about where do I find the renewals on the policy if I write it on a Tuesday versus like, just get on the phone, right? Because the reality is that's how you learn. Drake learned this stuff by talking to a bunch of clients, calling when he needed help, texting Grady, hey, what do I do? Writing the underwriting genie, I'm sure, right? Checking checking the pre-qualification on America. Like that's that's the name of the game, um, which is huge. So Drake, you mentioned that you start dialing at 5 a.m. Every day. So what is your schedule? Like how many hours, how many dials are you making legit? How many hours are you working? Like, what does that look like? I stopped tracking my dials, you know, the first week in July because it wasn't productive for me because I was already getting results and I just needed to call quality leads. So, um, but realistically, um, because I get people on the phone, have conversations at first, it was, you know, I could do five to 600 people before noon um, and another four to 600 people after. Um, and then when I started spending money on quality leads, it was like, not even a third of that. I mean, not even 10%. It was more like 30 people in the first three hours before noon and still getting one or two sales and 30 to 50 more people in the afternoon. It depends on your strategy. I like to take a batch of new leads like I did today with 60 new ones. And I hit them in the AM. I hit them at 8 AM before work, their time. And then I wait, see if, if they're retired, but I don't really pay that much attention to it. I just call them again in the midday. And then I wait till three, my time, because I'm in California, which is six, their time, call them at dinner time, and just repeat and do over again. And whenever I do that with a batch and just triple dial them and immediately text them after their contact card that they requested and my greeting, I don't send that each time. I just say, try it again. Is this important to you? I still have two options only. You know, so not a lot of questions, not too much data, very simple, basic text. Right. If you called 60 people today, three times mm -hmm. at three different times a day, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, 180? Yeah. I'm all from my, way. all from my iPhone by hand today. Okay. Yeah. okay. And you, you're triple dial right away each time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's basically, if we just round up to two, that's guys minimally, that, that's nine calls per lead guys. That's minimally like literally 800 dials in a day. So some of Sometimes, guys, these are the things you have to understand. Like Drake made $170,000 in the past four months because he dials and works. And even if he's like, hey, quality leads versus not quality leads, right? Like we have some people that are like, hey, uh, I, I dialed 10 people today. And it's like, cool, you dialed 10. Drake dialed 200 in the time that you dialed 10, right? So like, are you taking all day to dial or are you dialing all day, right? So you you can't be confused with these things. Are you like, and, and again, not everyone's going to do these things. Some people are not going to get up. Most people are not going to get up at 5 a.m. and start dialing drink, but that's why they're not making 200 grand in four months, right? So talk about um, how does that work on your, how does that work on your dial, like schedule? What are your sessions? Uh, so typically eight 
a.m. Well, 5 a.m. my time, I'll go till 10. So five hours straight without any distractions. Um, and then I'll like go walk my dog a second time because I get up at 3.30 and I work out and I walk my dog all before I start dialing. Um, I'm just, I'm 50. I'm old. I like to, you know, sleep five hours, get up and do it again. Um, you know, I'll eat something not heavy, uh, protein shake, you know, salad, whatever, keep my energy going, pound my last cup of uh, caffeinated, you know, whatever I might have. Um, and then, you know, pretty much one thirty, you get a lot of people who are retired or people who are trying to get coverage for their significant other who might be working. So it's a one lager appointment, which isn't my favorite, but at least I can collect all the data and get a same day appointment for when he gets home from work. And then it's really just go until I win. So you got to celebrate the wins. The, the one thing I can say about ritual or habit is that they say you need 21 days to make a habit. I believe that in fitness and it worked. I believed it in my diet and it worked in this business. Oh man, if you don't go 90 days and just forget about your family, except for emergencies, your confidence and ability to close and have heard every you know rebuttal, every excuse, them selling you on why they can't do it right now will will come to light and you'll just be so much more comfortable, calm. And anybody that brushes you off, I don't really care because I have so many more to get to Typically, my average when I was buying 30 at a time, I was selling five to eight policies, not families, whatever you guys, whatever we call it now. Um, and the Grady's like, what are you doing? He's like, you need to double your investment. And I'm like, oh, I'm scared. I'm already spending $1,000 every seven days. That was just for a month. And then I doubled it and I saw the consistency. Like I'd have five bad days and I'm just like, wow, God, I've been doing 14 hour days and this just really struggling. And I'm like, okay, well, got to do more. But my average for the months is killer. So it's like, you can have a bad week, even when you're working as hard as I do, as long as your averages are good. Like for some reason, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I put out ridiculous numbers, Saturdays, ridiculous numbers. And then there's a lot of a lot of ups and downs, but I control the calls and the touch points. And it could take nine to 15 touch points to get someone on the phone to where you can say, Hey, this is what I do and why I'm trying to call you back before I delete your file. Uh, just three things I need to move forward it takes less than 10 minutes. Can we do it right now? Sense of urgency. Cause if not, I got to move on. I've got 18 to 20 other appointments today. I really don't have time. I don't sell. I don't have time to get an appointment. I tell them I'm busy. I don't have that much time, but I can squeeze you in right now to make a request. And then I can make recommendations to you. Oh, I want to quote. Well, I don't give those because we're all water, blood, and oxygen. And until I check your MIB, Medical Information Bureau, it's completely different for everyone. That's why you can't find a quote on the internet without talking to a human. They need to know what your health conditions and lifestyle habits are. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So what's your account number? What bank was it again? Wells Fargo? Just going right back to the same three things with whatever they tell me. I'll basically get it out of them or I'll find out they've got some pretty terminal illnesses and I got a role to AIG and I still want to help them. Uh, I don't yeah. not want to help any client, but I don't give rates. I don't give quotes. I, I refuse you're to. Not, I broke my you're, rule. Not book, you're not booking appointments out. You're trying to one call close. And if they don't have the time to one call close, you just call them again at a different time. Yeah. I, if I like the appointments I have today are only because these leads came in this morning because they answered because they were at work and because I said, well, I've only got, you know, one spot left actually today and tomorrow I'm slammed. And they said, no, that works for me. I'll be home because I strategically thought, you know, I don't have the rest of my time booked. I'm going to be calling more people just like you, but I'm only going to tell you that I have one spot and I know it's going to be tonight when you're making dinner. So people always bite with that. I'll do same day appointments next day if I have to, but I really want to get better at one call closing and everything I've done, you know, I guess since July was getting them on the phone and closing them. It wasn't a second appointment except for the NLG illustrations that I've done. Um, except for those, those were two, two, two setters. Um, but everything else was one call, one closes. And if it's not broke, don't change it. I just, feel that I can get to more people in an hour than getting really comfortable with someone. And then at the end, they're like, oh, I had fraud. I never give my account number out. I watched that happen to some really good Hall of Famers for months. And I was already not doing it that way, the whole financial inventory from start to finish. Because if you don't qualify, 
what's the financial inventory going to do for either of us? And I can't get that hour back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So 2K a week on leads is what I'm hearing. Started with 1K a week. Now are you two a week? Uh, no, I'm like 2,100 every four days. Okay. So that's close to like between three and four, depending on. Okay. So, so three and four, but I mean, you close what? I mean, 59 last month. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always five times in my investment. So I look at it that way, you know, cause I don't really care. I just want the, the speed to the lead is key. Grady kept telling me in the beginning, you know, these, you know, comparing, you know, you and all the other machines that are in this industry, they just keep reinvesting in themselves and then the rest get dripped on whether you do it in, you know, Zippo or however you do your drip campaigns. I never used Zippo till three weeks ago. I only used it for verified producer, everything I did by hand to get these numbers. Um, but once you get to the lead, 10% of 30 is going to buy. They've already decided. So three people, if you can't make your money back off of three people off a $900 investment, that's a problem. You've got to work on your skills. Same thing is right now I bought 2,100 and today I one call closed one of them. America was like 1,500 and then stacked it with like an $800 accidental policy. So I made my money back already. And then I have the appointments later tonight. It, it's always just a matter of like, you know, how do I maximize my time into contacting people as quick as possible? Because if it, you get the leads in live time on Sunday and you're like, oh, it's Sunday afternoon and you don't call. Oh, it's so bad. When you call on Monday, they're like, oh, I requested that yesterday and they get mad. So keeping up with it. You, dial on, you dial on Saturday, Sunday, doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I only took one besides for this, the top producer cruise and then the trip for my 17 year old to Disneyland, which I booked a year ago. That's the only vacation I'm taking all year. I worked every Sunday for since I started, except one. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing everything on live dials. Is that correct? Correct. I'm logged hey, why, in every day. Hey, why do you do that? Accountability. Okay. Holds, you... me, holds me accountable because, you know, I, I close my other applications and really just have my leads open uh, and the tools to submit data. Everything else I kind of stay away from, uh, recruiting, um, social media, all that stuff I save for like 9 p.m. or when I'm trying to swallow food an hour a day. And that's when I reach out to people because if I don't get the results I want, I certainly am not recruiting people because I need to lead by example. So growing my team, I've been working on, I've filtered through 10, 15 people that have not worked out and that's okay because it's a numbers game, not a not a quantity, a quality game, it's quantity. But yeah, ultimately it's just repetitive dialing nonstop, no matter what the condition. Um, yeah. Once I realized, hey, this is better than commuting to my office. And I was remote before the pandemic. So I was high enough up in the level that I didn't have to, but now I never have to. It's all, you know, just reaching out to quality people, taking care of them. And you're like your own ATM. You just print your own money, but you have to control your time. And if you don't dedicate huge un unblocked times to call blocks, it's going to be impossible to get enough people on the phone to actually do a presentation or a pre-flight to know where they're going to land. Without pre-flight, you don't know where they're going to land. Everything's hope. And I'm not a hope kind of guy. I'm more of a behavior kind of salesperson, not a, I hope it works out kind of guy. Yeah. I love that. Now, Drake, you mentioned your family, which I know you have. Is it, is it two daughters? I have three, but one's married. She works at Apple. She's 27. The other one just got God. engaged. She's 24. Her boyfriend, she works at Apple too. Her boyfriend works for Oracle. So I only have one left. So our circumstances are different, but I've spoken to lots of you that do lots of things. Desiree, my sister up there. Um, it's just making the time to, to dial. If you well, got a lot, of, a lot of times, Drake, people will use that, right? They want to have this work life balance, right? And I'm like, there's no balance until your goals are met. Because yeah, you... there's no balance. Why would you want to have balance and be broke? I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather have no balance and not be broke. And, and maybe I'm different. So what is what is that conversation with your wife? What is that conversation with your family? Hey, I'm an, I'm going to work seven days a week because I'm going to make us 200 grand in four months. Like, what, what did that look like? Because a lot of times people have trouble sacrificing that, right? They're like, I have to take trips with my family. I have to pick my kids up from school. I have. And it's like, well, this person over here figured it out. So what like what what's the deal? A good way to explain it to family and loved ones is like, look, I didn't get my PhD. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I'm going to, I'm not a lawyer. I didn't go to Harvard, 
however, I'm going to make more money than them, but you need to give me some room to do it because until I practice enough for the next several months in a row, I'm not going to be at the skill level. But what I can show you is other people that have done it and their results. So for me, it's different because I'm 50, been in this house 25 years. My youngest is 17. She's low maintenance. So I don't really have to explain that much more like I just do it and she can just see the deposits coming in every other day. So she just leaves me alone because she, I'm, what you're doing is I'm sacrificing now and I'll probably be sacrificing for the next year, all of 2024 to hit the goals that I promised I would hit to Sean, which is hall of fame every quarter. Um, that's 1.6 million. I think you agreed to. Well, that's what my, that was my goal before I even knew what hall of fame was, but I'm buying back my time later. So when I'm 55, I have an agency. I'm an ambassador of this amazing brand. We're so fortunate to be part of, and I'm helping people get better who are at different parts in their life that might be struggling that I could say, Hey, it's going to be hard. It's not easy, but you can win, celebrate the wins, but you have to do it consistently for a long time. There's no in between. If you're a part-time agent and you're giving it all you got on the weekend, hey, good for you. What you're missing out on is game changing. I've made a lot of money um, in my corporate job, but nothing compared to what the capabilities are here or what I did in four months here. Uh, it's just unbelievable what we have access to. It, it's hard to shut down family, but when they realize that you're buying back time for later, who can't sacrifice a year? I'm not going to miss you know, a birthday of a child you know, or an emergency because I can get up and walk out anytime I want. But I am going to tell you that I'm committing the next year of my life to this new business because I want to see it work. Yeah. And guys, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that obviously have different situations, but there's a lot of people in FFL who have very young kids. Yeah. Uh -huh, right. There's a lot of people. I've seen single moms of three young kids under five go out and make two, three hundred grand a year. Right. The reality is like you just you figure it out if you want something. People are like, oh, you know. I, I can't get childcare. Why can't you? If it's like, if it's an, I can't afford it thing, well then write three policies, use those three policies to afford it so that you have time to be able to, to, to be able to do more. Right. The reality is here's the deal guys, writing policies, which gets you paid. And people want to argue with me about this all the time, which Drake, I've just, I've just stopped kind of, I'm, I'm not offended by it anymore. When people say, I don't think money buys happiness, but money gives you options. So the reality is if you go out and write policies and you can grind it out to figure out how to get that first 5K in your bank account, how to get that first 6K in your bank account, and then you now have money to take your kids to childcare or to get childcare for your home, right? Or to be able to, now I can book a flight to be able to go where I need to do, or now I can invest in my business or whatever it is, right? It's not like, oh, you know, money buys happiness, but money gives you options to do other things. So if that's the case, we got to do whatever we have to do to get that first five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten k in your bank account. And that's that's what I would do, right? And so like Drake's Drake's getting up at five, right? The reality is you could you could work, right? If you're on the East Coast, you could work until eleven or twelve p.m. and and be dialing in Hawaii while your kid while your kids are sleeping, because I'm sure your kids aren't up at two in the morning, because two in the morning East Coast time is what time Hawaii time, right? Like eight p.m. or something yep. ridiculous you still would have another hour of dial time or vice versa. You're on the West coast, right? And then the East coast is three hours ahead of you. So if you got up at five and started dialing at five and your kids don't get up till seven or whatever it is, that's two hours of, of kid free time. Right? So the reality is guys, what I'm trying to say and what Drake is trying to say is like, if it, it, it can be figured out because there's nothing here. And this is what's crazy is like, everyone has different situations, but, but really not. Like if you gave me almost any situation, Drake, and you were like, hey, this is my situation. And there would be a few, but there'd be like, I'd be like, I know somebody at FFL that makes 200 grand a year with that same situation or worse. So like, you know what I mean? Or, hey, someone has that exact same thing happening to them at home. Hey, someone was homeless, right? We had a 19 year old kid who was recruited that was living in his car, homeless. Do you think he had money for leads? No, he didn't even have money for food for his house that became a Hall of Fame producer the next year. So the reality is, guys, there's not a situation that I think anybody, and again, I'm someone will prove me wrong, but that I think that there'd be a reason to say, hey, I can't figure it out because somebody has done it, right? Somebody has, has figured it out and made that happen with whatever the, the situation is, right? You guys know Shadi, and, and another one would be um, Suhail. Suhail had to door knock every single lead he came when he came to the, because he, he couldn't speak English, nobody would answer the phone. He door knocked every single lead. He was a Hall of Fame producer. His, like imagine coming to America, not hardly being able to speak the language and still being able to figure it out. 
right? So, so I, I love what you stand for, Drake, because it's really just a testament of if you want to, you will. If you want to figure it out, you will. Like, is there anything that you do that you think anybody on this call can't do? No, not at all. No, I, this company makes it so accessible. You just nailed everything. With the time zones and our license and the flexibility, you really, if you call your upline and have an excuse, it's on you. I mean, I'm not trying to be harsh, but I'm just that no filter Irish Italian dude that's going to tell you because that's just me. I can't change. It's just my style. But there's no place in my whole life being employed since I was 18 in a corporation and worked as a company man my whole life where you have the flexibility we have here to make money. You just have to choose. Like, obviously, if you have kids, well, you're going to get licensed in Hawaii, depending on what state, what side of the country you live on. Obviously, you got to get licensed in the places where you can call when it's peak times and you're not busy with your child. I mean, every scenario, I've heard it and seen it and done it. And everyone, you're right. There's an example of everything here. But when you think about it, what Marissa just said very, very simply was you can choose and pick whatever call times you want because there's always a three to five hour difference. Um, so you can make it happen. You might have to work a little harder, a little faster at peak time, but you're calling it the best possible time in that state. So it can be done. You don't have to do what I do. Campaign, right? Someone told yep. me the other day, they were like, oh, you know, I, I'm not sure. Like if my, if my kid's awake and he's, and he's screaming, I'm like, well, then you could, you could literally text every single lead that you have, that you have, right. You could do a text campaign. You could do Zippo. If you're worried about being on the phone, because you have something going on, like what, what's stopping you from texting? What's stopping you from emailing? What's stopping you from, you know, going through your, your things and sending out your thank you cards to your clients or whatever? Like there's always activity to be done. What's stopping you from asking for referrals during that time? What's stopping you from putting on a new Facebook campaign or whatever it is? Um, Drake, someone asked a good question and I want to talk about this as well. Um, as far as persistency and keeping your clients on the books, what are some of the things that you say to your clients to make sure that they're going to be your client for life, to make sure that they're going to keep their policy? Great question. So, and I thought about that right away in the beginning, cause I was really worried about it. Um, one of the ones that I think is really valuable is, you know, uh, Marissa, congratulations on your policy today so excited for you. As you know, I called you from my phone number, which you saw on my license. It's actually my number I've had since 1997. So that's never going to change. Um, my office number is a virtual number and you're welcome to use that as well, but you can get me here directly uh, anytime. Um, also, I'd love to talk to Sammy, your daughter, with your permission. I just want to reach out to her, give her my contact card and say, hey, I'm Drake, the broker. I'm the guy that helped mom. Um, I never go over any details of your policy. I just give her my cell phone number so that there's an emergency. She knows on her worst day ever, she can contact me directly because some of the carriers, especially these big A-rated carriers I recommended that you're approved with are Monday through Friday. And they're also, you know, certain time zones. So God forbid something happens to mom middle of the night or on the weekend, you're routed to a not necessarily the most wonderful experience, but you have my number to reach out to. So I tell people two things. One, I'm not a captive agent. You know, I'm independent. I work for you. That means I want you in my book of business, which means I'm going to keep you a client for at least a year because it's the right thing we're putting you in today. I'm not interested in the insurance companies taking a premium today and getting paid tomorrow. That has no interest to me. What has interest to me is finding the right policy for you. That's the difference between us and them. The second is with your permission, I'm going to contact your daughter, your son, your beneficiaries, give them my contact card, say, call me on your worst day ever. I never share policy information. And they always go, oh, I love that. Would you do that? And I've gotten just in the last two months, I've gotten 15 policies from children of parents because they were so happy that I took good care of their parents. That had, And stacking Moo helps as well because when you have inexpensive large policies that cover all life's craziness, people are happy. Um, I also contact all of them because I'm new, but in my banking career, you know, I have their birthdays in the computer. I've got every holiday. I pretty much say happy holidays for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, because to me, it's all just holidays and cheer. But reaching out to the clients, um, chargebacks happen. Um, I had 12,000 just from America, but I issue paid 94,000. So, okay. Idea. You know, it doesn't really, it's not a problem for me. I also, if the person's really older, 
I'll sometimes be like, well, who's the beneficiary? My granddaughter. Perfect. Let's do an appointment with her on the phone. So I always want to cement the sale by making sure the beneficiary knows about it or if someone else is going to be paying it to protect the property, um, keeping them in the loop, just being as transparent as possible because it's not how fast I can sell it. It is how fast I can pre-flight it. And then it's adding value and letting them know who I am and why they're picking me as their agent for life, not somebody else, because I'm accessible. My number's been the same forever. You know, I'm a dad, three daughters, two are grown, have a little life experience. People like that when you have an elevator pitch that's about yourself and your own credibility. And, you know, having the same address since 2000 and the same phone number since 97 people feel more comfortable, then they can look me up on, you know, my LinkedIn and see my experience. And I'm knowledgeable, uh, approachable. I don't know all the answers, but I know how to find them fairly quickly. And I say that right up front, but all that stuff kind of tied together. They're really buying you because they can use ethos. They can use other carriers, um, but they're never going to get the same service we're going to provide. If you're going to win, become an ambassador for this brand, or you're just going to win and continue killing it for the next five years in insurance. Do you think you're going to let those policies after year one that you're getting paid on, you're going to forget about those? I have their first last name in my phone. And on the subject line, it literally says, you know, CC for clever closer. And then it says a space and it says, you know, TX, FL. So I know exactly what state. So I know exactly where to find their file. Or if it after the state, it says COI, it means center of influence. It means I sent them a $100 gift card because they referred me family members who I already submitted policies for. So when my phone rings, if it says COI on there, I know they referred me more clients. It's like, you know, I might have to pause my appointment and answer theirs really quick because they're a guarantee to refer more business. So just the little things that I used. Also, yeah. when you when you text from your iPhone now with the new software update, if you notice when you're dialing, it gives you the option to send your contact and picture card and your name and your picture. It pops up on the screen. For those of you that aren't using iPhone, I recommend it because next time you call them, it's going to say your name on their phone. Yeah. You get, right. So that's a neat that's little neat. trick that not a lot of folks knew about a month ago. I love it. Alex Braza said, this guy just follows everything to a T, which is so true, you guys. And I think that's 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 literally what it is, right? Like as much as I love Drake and he's an he's a complete beast and inspires me every day since I met him. Like he's really not doing anything that Grady didn't do. He's not doing anything that, you know, all these big producers, he's not doing anything Zach Tornowski didn't do. He's not doing anything Steve Giordano doesn't do. Like he's just doing what it takes, right? And I love when I asked you about your schedule. You said I don't have a schedule, I just go until I win. Right? Like that should be everybody's schedule, go until I win. And this is a Thing, guys I love you all so much but it keeps me up at night that I get we get 117 our top was 117 people on this call to be able to hear from Drake and he gives us all this wisdom of what we're going to do right and then for whatever freaking reason we get we get 30 people maybe on live dials so like like guys invest in yourself like don't show up for Drake don't show up for me don't show up for Riyadh our Hall of Fame producer don't show up for Grady like it's all great and fine and dandy but the reality is you show up for you like it's time for you to start showing up tomorrow to live dials on Tuesday. It's start it's time for you to start showing up on Wednesday when other people are live dialing and Thursday when other people are live dialing, right? Like that is the the biggest mystery to me in my life and I'll probably spend the rest of my life figuring it out is everyone on this call guys has so much potential. And even if you don't want to go out and do 204 months like Drake's a crazy person. If you're like, "Hey Marissa, I just like to do 104 months. Like I just like to do 25 every single month for the next 4 months." Like you could still do all the stuff Drake is doing and maybe take Sundays off if you want to. Like if you're like, hey, everything Drake said is cool, but I just can't work Sundays. Then what about the other six days a week? You're still not showing up to live dials on the other six days. You're still not showing up. To, you know what I mean? So the reality is, guys, I love you all so much. And I, and you all have the ability to do it. That I'm literally like every single day I'm racking my brain. Like, how do I get Nick to do it? How do I get Luke to know that he can do 30K? How do I get Tyler to do 50? Because he's a beast. How do I get you know, Morgan to, to do what Drake did and just go out and provide for her family like never before. Like you all have it in you because Drake wasn't even licensed four months ago. He didn't even have an insurance license four months ago. Like it's, it's, we just, we just got to get going and keep rolling 
and, and stop showing up for other people and start showing up for ourselves, right? If none of you guys come to the meeting next week, but you all got on live dials tomorrow and every single person made one sale, I would just cancel the meetings. I'd be like, perfect. I want you guys to make money for your family more than I care about you coming to this meeting. I want you guys to make money for your family. I want to see you at convention, but I'd rather you be like, hey, Marissa, I made 300 grand this year. I'm not coming to convention. I'd be like, yeah, because I'm going to, you know, the weekend away with my family. I'd be like, that's cool because that person made money for their family. We have no desire, guys. We don't, I don't want anybody to be like, hey, FFL is cool. I go to every single meeting, but I'm still broke. That doesn't, that doesn't give me flutters in my tummy. Like that's not great, right? I don't love that for you. I want to give you all these resources that you can take and be like, okay, now I just changed my family's life. I just changed my life for my kids instead of telling my kids why they couldn't have something. Right guys. And, and I say that because I was that kid. I was that kid that my mom was like, Hey, we can't get that because of this, or Hey, we have to save up for your basketball shoes or Hey, the church bought, brought you Christmas presents. Or actually she would say they're from us. She would say they're from her. And I'd be like, mom, I know the church brought us. So it was like, you wouldn't, I, yeah, I know you didn't wrap those presents. Right. Like I know that though we got donated to us. Right. And I, I knew how bad that hurt her. Right. So the reality is like, we want, want that so bad for your family. And we're figuring out how to give you every single resource that you probably, that you need to do it. It's just showing up on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday when you don't want to. And Drake said he has a bad week and he still comes back and he wakes up at 5 a.m. even when he doesn't want to. And showing up on Sunday. He said, if my leads come in on Sunday, I dial them on Sunday. Right. We just have to stop letting these things limit us when the opportunity that we have in our hands is actually stupid. Like every day I wake up, Drake, do you ever think like, this is stupid? No, no. I think sky's the limit. You know, honestly, everything you said is is right on. And regardless to everyone listening, if your goals are, you know, 10,000 a month or 20,000 or you're part-time, it really doesn't matter. But until you put in the time, you're really not going to have the skill set to make sure you're achieving it. And then once you put in the time, you're going to be shocked with what you're capable of. That's like I, Marissa said, Drake goes till he wins. Do you think I stop after I win? That's the addicting part, right? So like the days, that one day I did like 25 in one day, everyone was blowing me up. I'm just like, wow, you know, it was a bunch of clients from July. I've been dripping on and, you know, three one call closes. Um, you, those of us that are in sales are in it for a reason. So everybody's reason or, you know, is inspired to win or everybody motivates differently. Your incentives differently. I can guarantee one thing we're all the same about. However you spend your money, the more you have, whether it's buyback time, freedom, or have a better quality of life, you got to get there. And practice is the only way to get there. And then you can tune down your skills, train other people, build an agency. But if you, you can't lead and crush it and be comfortable in any environment on the phone with any customer to close them, then you just haven't practiced enough. You got to start. So it doesn't matter if you're one, two years in already or brand new, you just have to start, but you got to give it everything. That's my thought. Got to give it everything you got. Yeah. Well, Drake, I appreciate you. You've been fantastic. I can't even believe we get to do this every single day. So I'm I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful that we got to meet and that you've been able to inspire me and keep me rocking and rolling. And I'm like, dude, I got to get like that guy. He's been here four months. I've been here three years. So I'm well, excited, you're, guys. You're doing amazing. Inspired me from day one, what, three conferences ago in Arizona when I met you? Um, so you are a brand ambassador and so, you represent, so you're telling me you came to the conference in Arizona mm -hmm. Oh, this is three months ago. Yeah. The first oh, one. I thought you meant, I'm like, wait, you've been coming to the conventions and not being licensed. I see what yeah. you're saying. Now. Just a right. couple months ago. So yeah. guys, well, Drake, you've been phenomenal. Thank you so much, guys. Um, obviously guys, Drake shared more than enough with us and gave us his phone number. Please only utilize his phone number. If you're going to be serious about writing business, if you've not written business in six months, do not reach out to Drake. Like, Hey, how should I write my first policy? You have me for that. You have your upline for that. You have your team. If you want to take your stuff to the next level, right? If you're trying to go, how do I get from 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 to 50? Reach out to Drake, guys, but please do not waste his time asking him about the underwriting guys. So we're excited for you. We love you guys. I will see you all on live dials tomorrow. Anything we can do to help him here. Have a good week, guys. Thank you.